Hi, my name is Lavinia, this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I'm very happy to teach you and give you some tips on how to play Arc Nova, designed by Matthias Vigge and published by Capstone Games. I love this game because when you play it, that's all there is. Your entire focus is on building your perfect zoo. I love how each game is so different because there's just so many cards and so many zoos and until the end of the game, you don't really know who's going to win. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button and the bell to get notified when I post new videos, it helps a lot. In Arc Nova, you compete against other players to build the most appealing zoo while also ensuring that you uh, support sound conservation projects. You will do this by building the appropriate enclosures and attracting the right mix of animals, but also by hiring specialists, attracting sponsors, creating associations with other universities and supporting breeding projects. When the appeal of your zoo meets the conservation points, the game ends and the player with the most points wins the game. To set up the game, you place the board in the middle of the table and each player picks a colour. There are two sides to the board, but they play exactly the same. The only difference is the orientation of the cards in the display. Pick the one you prefer like this or like that. Place one counter for each player at the beginning of the conservation track. You go up this track every time you see this icon. Shuffle the nine bonus tiles and randomly place one on each of these four spots face up. Return the others to the box. Shuffle all the zoo cards, randomly place six face down here and the deck face down here. The zoo cards represent the animals, the sponsors and conservation projects that you can bring to your zoo during the game. Then place one counter for each player at the beginning of the reputation track. This shows up to which card you can pick from the display. Higher up the track, you also collect some cool bonuses. Then randomly select the first player and place the first player counter here at the beginning of the appeal track. The second in clockwise order here and so on for all players. This number represents the money you make at the end of every round. Talking about rounds, there's a tracker to mark the round's progress. You use this coffee cup token as the break marker. It starts on one of the numbers indicated here, depending on the number of players, such a day three for this three player game. Now that we're done with the main board, you will place the association board next to it. This is where you will have the association with other zoos, universities, and the conservation and breeding projects. Place one of each partner zoo continent markers here, and one of each university association markers here. Shuffle the 12 base project cards and place three face up at the bottom of the conservation board. Return the others to the supply. In a four player game, you reveal four cards as the base projects. For a two player game, cover these with a color you don't use. They cannot be used during the game. For a three or four player game, don't cover any. Now that all the common components are set, each player takes one zoo map, place it in front of you. For beginners, there's four boards with a side A. Pick this one for your first few games. As indicated, place one size three enclosure face down here. There's five sizes of standard enclosures in the game. They range from size one to size five. There's also three special enclosures, the petting zoo, the large bird aviary, and the reptile house. I'll explain all those later. There is also another size one building. It's double-sided. On one side is a kiosk that increases your income. And on the other side is the pavilion, which gives you more appeal. Place the kiosk here. Once you've played a few games, you can play with more advanced zoos. They each have a special ability. There's a couple of ways you can go about it. You can either randomly give two of the maps numbered one to eight to each player and pick the one you prefer. Or you can let players draft their map amongst randomly selected maps. The number of players plus one. So four maps in a three player game. The player who starts last picks the first map, then proceeds counterclockwise. If you're playing with a mix of beginner and advanced players, you can give a map zero to all the beginner players and then let the advanced players pick in one of the ways I've just explained. Whichever zoo map you've picked, now place seven of your tokens on the left spaces of your map. You will activate those once you support association projects. To do that, you will use association workers. At the start of the game, you have one association worker, which you place on the notepad of your zoo. Place the other three lying down on the track on the right of your board. Now shuffle the 11 final scoring cards and give two to each player. You can look at them, uh, but you don't need to pick the one you will use to score at the end of the game. Randomly give eight zoo cards face down to each player. As I've shown earlier, there are three types of cards. Let's have a look at them in more detail. You use animal cards to add animals and empty enclosures in your zoo. The requirements to add them are all shown on the top left of the card. 
Like this moose who needs a minimum habitat size of four, costs 19 money and requires that you already have two herbivore tags in your zoo. It's often a waste to put an animal in a bigger enclosure, but you can. Ideal if you match the size, but not necessary. In some instances though, you will put a smaller animal in a bigger enclosure to fulfill something. Some also need to be near water or rock spaces. All these require to be near a rock space and all these require to be adjacent to a water space. Some like these require to be near two rocks or two water spaces. And the New Zealand fur seal even requires to be near both one water and one rock space. Then sometimes it shows other requirements like specific tags, associations or action upgrades. Like this, which requires two research tags and these which require you upgrade your animal action card. Also on the top right, you will see the tags that this card will bring to your zoo. Here, a primate in Asia tags and here a bear, a predator and a Europe tag. Note that to add the card into your zoo, you need to already have the tags in your zoo. You can't use the ones from the card you're going to play. Here's a description of the immediate effect which takes place when you add the animal to your zoo. Finally, you can score appeal, conservation or reputation bonuses. With this beautiful Sumatran tiger, you even score all three. Then you have the sponsor cards, the blue cards. This is where you can hire specialists, get unique buildings and get some special effects. This is the level your sponsor action card must meet to add the sponsor into your zoo. They range from three to six. Many sponsors also have requirements like I've showed you for the animals. Also, most sponsors give you immediate bonuses. Those are shown in a yellow box like here, this unique building. Resolve it immediately. Some also have permanent ongoing bonuses, which are shown in a blue box on top of the card. Also, if there's a purple box with a receiving hand on top of the card, you will collect extra bonuses during the income phase, like money, cards, X token, or even conservation points. Finally, if there's a brown box on the bottom right of the card, you can score bonuses if you meet its requirements at the end of the game. Finally, you have green cards. They represent the conservation and breeding projects you can support and gain conservation points. You can score these objectives in addition to the ones that are there at the start of the game. On the top left is the type of objective you need to fulfill for this project. At the bottom are the three levels of objectives and the rewards they each bring. Like this one, which requires you release one primate from your zoo. Get five conservation points if you release a primate four or bigger, four points if it's a size three, or three conservation points if it's two or smaller. In addition, if there's this icon, the player who's played this conservation card will receive one reputation point. All players at the same time keep four cards and discard the other four. Now let's look at the cards you will use to take your actions. There's two sides to them. You will start with the blue side and potentially upgrade them during the game to the red side. Place the animal card here, blue side face up under the one. Then randomly place the remaining four cards under the numbers two to five. You use the build card to add an enclosure to your zoo. With the blue side, you can build one single building. Its size depends on your place on the track. So here you can build either a kiosk, a pavilion, a petting zoo, or a size one to five standard enclosure. You pay two money for each space. So it costs two to 10 money. In this case, it would cost six to build a petting zoo. You can build as many standard enclosures as you want to, but you can only build one petting zoo. It's the same for the advanced buildings. You can only have one large bird aviary and one reptile house. You can build these two after you've upgraded your build card to its red side. With this upgrade, you can also build several buildings at once, still within the limits shown on the track. Now I'll explain the cards action. You use this to move the break marker two spots and draw cards. Depending on its strength, you can draw cards from the deck or from the display. You can discard cards from your hand, not just those that you've just drawn. And once you upgrade, you can also draw from the display. These you can pick in a combination either from the reputation within range of your counter or from the top of the deck. Alternatively, you can snap one single card from anywhere on the reputation track from strength of five on the blue side or from three to five on the red side. Now let's look at the sponsor action card, which lets you play a sponsor into your zoo. Pick one sponsor from your hand equal or lower to the strength of the card. So here you can only pick the strength three sponsor. On the red side, you add a plus one to the strength of the card. So now you could play this sponsor level four. 
Also, the red side allows you to play a sponsor directly from the display. It needs to be within the strength of your card and within your reputation range. Pay the cost based on the folder where that sponsor card is located. Here, three money and place the sponsor into your zoo. If you don't have or don't want to play a sponsor, you can move the break token up to collect money as per your position on the track. One for one on the blue side and two money for that position on the track for the red side. Even if you reach the coffee break in less moves, you still collect the full amount. Now I'll explain the association card, which lets you send workers to the association board um, as high as the level of your card is on the track. If you have an association worker available on your notepad, you can send it to the association board. At two, you go up your reputation track two levels. At three, you build an association with another continent. You place the partner zoo token on the lowest available spot on this track. This counts as one tag for that continent. It also gives you three money discount when you play an animal with that tag. Here it has two tags, so the discount would be six. At four, you pick up a university token, place it on the lowest available spot on this track. Immediately go up the reputation track twice if you pick up this token. You can only pick each partner zoo or university token once. You can't have, for example, two Africa tokens. At five, you can support a base conservation project. Play one previously played by another player or one from your hand. Place a cube taken from the left of your player board. Collect the reward immediately both from the reveal player board and from the supported conservation or breeding project. If you've upgraded your association card and you have enough workers, you can play more than one action. You can also pay to make one donation per turn. Pay the money indicated on the top most available space. Cover it with a cube from your supply, not your board, and go up one conservation point. Now I'll show you how to play the animal action card, which you use to add animals to unoccupied enclosures if you meet the requirements I explained earlier. Where the card is on the track determines how many animals you can play. Here you can play one animal as long as you have the appropriate empty habitat for it. This Australian pelican needs a habitat of at least size 4 and also to be adjacent to two water spaces. Pay the cost and since it doesn't have any other requirements you can flip the enclosure to mark it's now occupied. If you are on level 5 you can play two animals as long as you have the habitats and the money. You resolve the first animal completely and then the other. To add one of the 10 petting zoo animals into your zoo, you first need to have built a petting zoo. A size one enclosure does not work. Also, since there are more than one space, you don't flip the board when you add a petting zoo animal. Instead, place a cube from your supply, not from your bonus track. Do the same when you place an animal in the large bird aviary or the reptile house. If you have upgraded your animal action card, you also raise your reputation track by one if you play it at level five. Now you can flip the six zoo cards on the display and you give each player 25 money. You're ready to start playing. The first player must play one action card. Its strength varies depending where it is on the player track and if it's been upgraded. Once you've played your action card, move all those on its left one level up and place the card you've just played back to level one. Now it's the turn of the player on your left to play an action card. I'll explain in more detail some of these actions, starting with some things to keep in mind when you're building an enclosure or a building. You need to place your first building near the border of your zoo map. Always build your standard enclosures face down. Any building after that needs to be adjacent to an existing building. Remember the two space limitation between kiosks. Finally, you can never build a building on rock or water spaces unless your card says otherwise. On your zoo map, there are a bunch of icons with a yellow background. When you first cover them with a building or an enclosure, you gain that bonus. Let's have a look at them. With this one here, you collect five money and 10 money from this one. This one gives you one X token, and here you can move your counter up to two spots on the reputation track. And this one means you can pick a zoo card from the display up to your reputation level or from the top of the deck. Finally, with this one, you can pick up an extra association worker. Always take the one furthest at the bottom of the track. On more advanced boards, there are more symbols. This one lets you place any action card back on space one after you've completed the current action. Here you pick up a times two token, place it on an action card, and the next time you play it, you can take the action twice. 
Here collects you money, and here you can place a sponsor card in your zoo. Just pay the cost of the sponsor level in money. With this one, add one association continent from the association board to your player board. And with this one, you pick a university token to your board. Remember that even when you collect like this, you can't have the same token twice. Also, like the zoo map, as you place new tokens, you will collect new bonuses. Here, you either go up once or twice the conservation track, and here you add another association worker into your pool. And as you do so, sometimes you also reveal new bonuses, like here going twice on the conservation track. The more advanced zoo maps have their own unique abilities and requirements. You can check the back of the glossary for a more detailed description of all eight of them. Finally, these red symbols mean that you cannot build on them until you've upgraded your build action card. There are similar symbols around the game, which restrict areas until you upgrade your action card. Here in your continent association, you need to upgrade your association action card to add a third or fourth partner continent. Here on the reputation track, you need to have upgraded your cards card to move to the fifth and sixth folder. These locations let you access some pretty cool bonuses. Here you pick a card from the display within your reputation range or from the deck. Here one conservation point and here an X token. And it's the same for the sixth folder. If you reach the end of the track and you score reputation points, you gain appeal points instead. Now I'll show you where you can upgrade the action cards. From the main board, when you reach level two on the conservation track, and when you reach position five on the reputation track, from your player board, when you place your second university and your second partner zoo token. Once you've upgraded your build action, you can build one large bird aviary and one reptile house. In the same turn that you build this special enclosure, you can immediately transfer some animals into this new habitat. It cannot be done later, so let me show you now how it's done. Any animal which was in your zoo that has this icon or this one can be transferred to its special enclosure. Make sure that it meets the requirements. Some of these might require a rock or water, so the special enclosure must be adjacent to those as well. All reptiles can transfer to the reptile house, but only the birds with this symbol can transfer to the large bird aviary. If the conditions are met, flip the enclosure the animal is transferring from you can use it again later. Once a special enclosure is full, you cannot add any more animals in it and need to use a standard enclosure. Now, let me show you some of the cards that require you to build a unique building. While you do not need to upgrade your build action card for these, you do need to be able to place the building. If you cannot place the building face up in your zoo, you cannot play the card. You do not use the build action or pay to build these buildings. They do not count as enclosures or as rock or water spaces. Now I'm going to explain some of the animals um, that have special icons that need a bit more explanation. With pouch, you gain two appeal for each card from your hand you place under this card. If you later release the animal into the wild, discard the cards, but you still keep the appeal points. With perception, you can draw cards from the deck Keep half and discard the rest. With Hunter, you draw cards from the top of the deck. Keep one of the animal cards you've revealed. If there's no animal card in the draw, you must discard all the cards. With Sunbathing, you can sell cards from your hand for four money each. Put the cards you've sold into the discard pile. There's also some zoo cards with a red 25 icon as a requirement. This means you can't play these cards if you are higher than 25 in the appeal track. Another cool set of rules is when you play animals that affect other players who have reached at least five on the appeal track. You place Venom tokens on the leftmost action cards of players with a higher appeal than yours. One token for Venom 1 and two for Venom 2. While you have a Venom token, you pay two money extra every time you play a card that doesn't have a Venom. In order to get rid of the Venom, you need to play the card that has the Venom on it. With Hypnosis, you affect the player with the highest appeal. In case of a tie, you pick the player affected. You can take one of their one, two or three strength action cards as if it was one of your own. You can also add your X tokens. Once you're done, your card goes to slot one. With Pilfering 1, you steal from the zoo with the highest appeal. With Pilfering 2, you steal from the one with the highest conservation as well. The player you steal from decides either to give you five money or allow you to steal one random card from their hand. 
Constriction tokens affect all players ahead of you on the conservation track and appeal track. Place the constriction token on the fifth action card if ahead on one track and on the fourth and fifth if ahead on both tracks. You cannot add more than one constriction token per card. If you already have some, keep the extra in the supply. Constriction tokens reduce those action cards by two strength until the card is played. If for some reason you sent your card to strength one or two, you cannot play the card until it reaches level 3 or use X tokens. Also, if the action has a multiplier, both actions would be negative 2. For all these four effects, you can move the appeal counter before or after activating it. Now, let me explain the conservation project and how you pick up the bonus tiles. To support a conservation project, you must meet either one of its 7 animal or 5 continent requirements. You can support each project only once, so choose carefully. Also, a few projects require you to release an animal into the wild. Take this card from your zoo and place it into the discard. Remember that when you add your own conservation project, you shift any other previously played to the right. In a three-player game, it means this one would be pushed out and you can't play it anymore. In a four-player game, it would be up to here. As you go up the track, if you're one of the first players to get to five, you will pick up one of those on a first-come, first-served basis and again, when you get to 8. When you get to 10, you're going to pick one of the two final scoring cards that you received during setup. Now I'm going to explain an action that is often overlooked, which is instead of using the ability of one of your action cards, you can instead pick an X token. You still shift one of your cards, but without playing it, and add an X token to your notepad. The five limit still applies, there's also a lot of cards and locations where you can gain X tokens in the game. You can use the X token to increase the strength of an action card. If you really want to take an action, but you want it at a higher strength, you can spend X tokens to raise the action level by one for each X token returned to the supply. You can also use these to take a second action if you've upgraded your association card. And of course, you can still pay one donation if you have the money. That's a pretty good turn if you can pull it off. But remember, you must have all the X tokens before you take the actions. You cannot use X tokens, you've just gained this turn. Now explain the sponsor action card and what happens when the coffee cup reaches the coffee break and triggers the end of the round. Keep in mind that you collect the money based on the level of the action, not the number of steps you've moved. So it's still four or eight, even if you were one step away from the coffee break. Now the active player collects the next token. All players discard down to three cards, unless they already have the five card university token. Then all players return any multiplier, venom or constriction tokens to the supply. Then bring all your association workers back to your board and replenish the association board. Then discard the card one and two of the display, shift the other four down and draw two new ones from the top of the deck in five and six. Now all players collect their income simultaneously unless a condition states otherwise, in which case it would be starting clockwise from the player who initiated the break. Activate everything you have with a purple background. Collect money as per your appeal level. Collect one money for each building or occupied territory adjacent to a kiosk in your zoo. Empty standard enclosures do not count. Some sponsor cards and activated bonuses on the left of your zoo map also offer bonuses to collect during the income phase. Finally, return the break token to its starting place and the next player is ready to go on and on scoring points, growing your zoo and supporting conservation and breeding projects. When your appeal marker crosses your conservation marker or vice versa, the end of the game is triggered at the end of your turn. All the other players will play one more turn and then we count the points. Check all the sponsor cards you have with an end of game hourglass icon. Also add the final scoring cards you fulfilled. In the rare occasion where no player reaches 10 conservation points, you still need to discard one of your initial final scoring cards. Move your conservation counter to the lowest appeal value in that area. Subtract this number to your appeal value to calculate your victory points. And the player with the highest positive points wins the game. In case of a tie, it's the player who supported the most conservation projects, and if they still tie, they can share the victory. My tips to win at Arc Nova are, start by combining cards as much as possible, Sponsored cards working together towards conservation projects and with final scoring cards is what you should aim for. As I've shown, the association upgrade is very powerful and you should try to do it quite early so you can start giving donations. 
If you can, it's a good idea to keep a mix of animals and sponsors in your starting hand. Even better if they match the base conservation project and if you can fulfill them early in the game. If you've upgraded your sponsor, your animal or association action cards, you can buy from the display within your reputation range. Conservation projects where you release an animal will give you points and will free up habitat so you can use them again. You should pick carefully which action cards to upgrade because you can only upgrade four out of the five. If a card contradicts the rulebook, always follow what the card says. It's sometimes worthwhile to support a conservation project at a lower level to get that income bonus early in the game. And that's how you play Arc Nova. There's a lot of moving pieces, but it's not hard to learn and it's very rewarding. I love how you're working towards joining these two tracks and I find that it plays equally well at two, three or four players. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, uh, consider becoming a YouTube member or supporting me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. If there's a game you would like me to teach, leave it in the comments. I'll definitely check it out. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.